The problem with Volkswagens and Audis is not that you don't understand how the car runs, it's an internal combustion engine. The problem is the terminology that Volkswagen and Audi use, the wiring diagrams, especially the common current track wiring diagrams that they use, and the scan tool presentation is quite different than most of the domestics and the Japanese and even some of the other European cars that you're dealing with. So we feel that if we can get you past that, you'll understand the car and all of a sudden it's now just like working on your normal Chevrolet or your Ford and everything goes much better. Now, guys, when we talk about terminology standards, if you look in the book, at, down there at the bottom of page 1-4, we talk about the simple fact that Volkswagen, very much like some of the Japanese counterparts, don't seem to use the same terms that you're used to. So it's really important during the course of this to make sure when you look at a component, let's say a fuel pump relay, which may never be called a fuel pump relay, that by using the wiring diagrams, you understand the parts the components, and how they're interconnected on the vehicle that you're going to be working on. Another area that's really extremely important on Volkswagen Audi is what are we working on? If you look on page 1-4, 1-5, 1-6, and 1-7, guys, you're going to see quite an extensive list of Volkswagen engine codes. Now, they haven't made as many Volkswagens as they have engine codes. So it's real important that you understand where the engine code is located and the importance of the simple fact that the same engine group might have two different engine codes. The engine codes might determine for the part supplier exactly what types of systems and components are on this that might not be on another engine of the same size in a different application. Continuing on guys, information. It seems like information has always been one of the biggest areas of concern for any automotive technician. I can fix anything has always been my stance if I have the information to tell me how it was built and how it works. The problem is a lot of information is manufacturer specific and of course you can if your shop is connected with the internet and you have a subscription go to the manufacturer's website. If you look in the book, we give you the actual manufacturer's website. They have several plans and options, three-day, monthly, yearly subscriptions. Some shops can't find that cost effective for a yearly subscription, but the daily subscriptions sometimes work out. And of course, you've got on-demand and you've got all data, which are your aftermarket informational systems, which most shops across the country do have either on disk or on your internet format. Now, there are other information sources out there like the IATN.net, Ross Tech, you've got uh, Autodata, Identifix. These are all viable options. Remember, information is the key to repairing the vehicle. Now, if you look, guys, the wiring diagram is probably the area that most of you have the biggest difficulties with, okay? Some aftermarket informational systems convert the wiring diagrams from the common current track format to the SAE format and it's not that they lose something in the translation but they just don't quite work out nearly as well as if you have the original common current track wiring diagrams. Now the problem with that is most technicians are used to SAE. That's what we've worked on all our life. That's what we grew up with. The Europeans coming across brought the common current track wiring diagram, and most of us look at it the first time I looked at it. I looked at it and I said, oh my, well, <laughs> I have no idea what's going on here. And so I took the wiring diagrams and I said, well, okay, hopefully I can fix it without them and threw them out. And then I took my scan tool in, and I'm used to PID data. I went to the PID data, and I expected a long list saying RPM, ECT, IAT, and lo and behold, they weren't there either. I had things called measuring blocks. I had a completely different format on the scan tool. Measuring blocks were given numbers. I didn't know which number I needed to go to to find the information, and then when I went to the measuring block, because I went and found, oh, measuring block 34 is the one I need to go to, then I had four channels under that measuring block. There were values in the blanks, but they didn't label what those values were, I was supposed to know what they were. Now guys, 
we'll start out with the wiring diagrams, try to explain them, then we'll go on into the measuring blocks. And as you well know, scan tools advance every day. You get a new version of your software and your scan tool, they fix some of the problems. A lot of the aftermarket manufacturer scan tools now are trying to fill in the blanks and now when they give you a list of measuring blocks, they convert the data information and try to start doing the labeling. So if you do not have the money to go out and buy a factory scan tool and you don't particularly want to, help is on the way in the form of more and more visions on your software and of course keeping your software current is always important.